Hello, welcome back to another Mine Colonies video. So today I'm going to take you through the Mine Colonies configuration file. Um, there's lots of different options you can play with in the mod and they're all located in the config file. Um, easiest way to find the config file is from the Minecraft game. Open the resources folder, um, go up a folder level and then you should see a config folder. In there is a config file for all the mods you're using, uh, if you're using the curse mod pack that we released, then there's quite a few in there. One in there will be called Mine Colonies. Um, just open it up, it opens up in a text editor such as WordPad or Notepad or something like that. Uh, then you can make any changes in here. Obviously, don't forget to save it when you've made the changes. Um, one thing I should say is if you're playing on a server, then a lot of the options uh, run from the server side config file so you can't change things um, from the local config file obviously so that everyone's playing from the same pl level playing field etc um, but this will definitely all work for any SSP games you're playing uh, and if you're a server owner obviously you need to set the game up to play how you want okay so what is in the configuration play file um, so the first thing, allow infinite placing of supply chests, um, does what it says in the tin. If you set this to false, then any player can place as many supply chests or supply camps as they wish. Um, so you can have multiple ships and whatever you want. Uh, allow player to use their own schematics in multiplayer. Um, false by default, this is a server side one. If you put it to true, uh, then all um, client-side schematics can be used on a server. Um, guys have done some quite good work and schematic files will transfer back and forth between the server and the client. Um, so the client doesn't necessarily need any of the schematics on the server and vice versa if this is true. Uh, always render client's name tag is true. You can obviously set that false. I think that's pretty obvious what that one will do. Block mining delay modifier, taking into account to determine how long a block need to be successfully mined. So this is basically for the miner, um, lumberjack and builder I believe. And this is how much of a delay between building, uh, between mining blocks. So clearing the land, chopping trees, chopping stone, etc. Um, the higher the number, the slower the workers will mine and the shorter the number the quicker they will mine so you can uh, tweak the balance of those workers by upping or re re I can't speak today upping or reducing that figure accordingly how many ticks between placing blocks for the builder um, pretty obvious uh, this is the delay between placing blocks so the lower the number the quicker the builder will build by default and the greater the number the slower he will build. Um, so again, a bit of a balance thing if you want your builder quicker or s or slower. Um, don't forget, they do get faster as they skill up. Um, so if you set it too quick to begin with, then they're just like insane later on and very OP and kind of ruins the gameplay. But they're there, you can play with it to, to your heart's content. Does builder have infinite resources? Uh, if you set this set this to true, the builder will build any building um, without needing any resources whatsoever. So it's free building. Players get respawn citizens command uh, true by default. So there is a command which I can't remember. I will probably do a different video on commands at some point. Um, there is a command that can respawn citizens, um, etc. Player get add officer command, player get citizen info command, players get delete colony command, players get kill citizens command, players get list citizens command. These are all individual commands that can be used to help you manage a colony. Uh, it's more sort of server controls really, so ops and server owners can um, help with colonies when they go a bit funky. Uh, <laughs> does happen. Um, so again, we'll probably do a separate video on what all the commands are for mine colonies because there are quite a few, um, but these just set them whether they can be used or not. Players can use the mine colonies TP command or not. So set to true. So if you type slash MC RTP, uh, that's random teleport. So uh, that will teleport you 
anywhere up to a certain number of blocks away from where you are. Um, and if you don't want people to be able to do that on your server, set it to false or just leave it to true and you can use that in a single player game. Players get refreshed colony command. Uh, this is MC space colony space refresh. Um, basically, if something's gone wrong in your colony, maybe the per permissions have dropped or something like that, type that in and hopefully that'll fix it. Players get show colony info command true. Again, there's another colony management thing subject to a different video, I think. Chat frequency seconds. So this is the seconds delay between a worker uh, sending you the same request. So when the builder asks for materials, that's the delay between those messages. So um, change that as you see fit. Citizen respawn interval range 10 to 600. Uh, so again, this is the time. That should be default 300. This is the time between... Um, citizen spawning so at the start of the game you get your four this is the time delay between them um and also if they die lots of them die you only get one citizen spawn every 300 seconds basically five minutes um i'm not sure that's that high to be honest but there you go does delivery man have infinite resources that's set to false again if you set it to true then the delivery man can fulfill any request without needing any resources, without needing anything in the warehouse. Display and development features which do not work and may great break your game. Uh, that's just for us lot to debug with. Um, if you do set it to true, it will probably crash and wreck the game. So only play around with that if you're interested in um, some of the things we use to see if something's gone wrong or not. Enable the automatic colony protection. Uh, so that's set true by default. This is so we have a permission system that stops people griefing in your colonies and doing other things. Um, this includes creeper, creeper explosions, all the rest of it. So you can turn that off if you want. If you want to go hardcore PvP, anyone can screw with anyone's colony, then set that to false and um, yeah, have fun with that. Uh, blocks players should be able to interact with inside any colony. Um, Again, that's part of the above. Um, even I'm not sure what that one does, so probably best to leave it as it is. Ignore the schematic from the jar file. Um, again, I think this is if you want to overwrite the local um, schematics. So if you have done that and created your own custom schematics if you put this to true it shouldn't overwrite them with anything from the jar files um, especially if you update the mod limit the colony to one warehouse per colony so currently by default you can only have one warehouse in the colony uh, if you want more you can set that to false and therefore you can build as many warehouses as you want word of warning though um, the warehouse does create a lot of lag there are a lot of chests in there and whenever anyone wants anything, the delivery man has to scan the chests to see if it exists in any of those chests. So when you have multiple colonies and multiple, uh, sorry, multiple warehouses, multiple delivery men, that can generate a lot of lag, especially on a server. So single player games, probably not an issue. Servers, unless you have a real reason, I would suggest leaving that on true. Limits the number of blocks, the number of checked blocks per builder update uh, to a thousand. Again, this is a thing you can use to control lag. Um, so if you limit or further limit the blocks under a thousand that the builder can check, um, can help with laggy servers. How many cache schematics the server can store before deleting them? So this is really a protection for servers so that if someone finds a way of spamming schematics towards the server um, then this will basically limit the what effect that can have so again leave it as it is unless you're a server owner and know what you're doing and want to change that maximum number of citizens this isn't in total this is just the number you get spawning from the town hall at the start so if you want more citizens at the start or even if you want less to make the put the challenge up just change that number so if you put it at 10 you'll get 10 citizens spawn straight away at the start of the game um, however you would need to build 11 levels of citizens huts before you got any more so 
change that to your heart's content distance from spawn in all directions ah so this is for the rtp command how far it can teleport you from the spawn so again change that to suit your own needs Record op level to execute commands. Again, this is just the default setting for ops to be able to use the mine colonies commands. Um, so server owners can play with that. Doesn't do anything in SSP as everyone is considered an op in single player, I believe. Should build a place construction tape. So if you don't like the construction tape um, thing we added where whenever you build, upgrade or repair a building, the construction tape goes around the boundary of it set that to false and it all disappears allow crafting of the supply chest equals true um, so you can turn that to false if you want uh, which means although you might have mine colonies on the server no one would be able to craft a supply ship and therefore get a town hall so you can restrict the building of town halls to just certain people by having some method of them getting hold of a town hall um, so if you set that to false, it stops anyone really starting a colony unless you give them a town hall. Time until next teleport in seconds. So this is a default delay in when you can use the RTP command. Again, mainly for servers to stop spe people spamming the RTP command and causing performance issues. So there's a two minute cooldown by default. Again, server owners, please change that to suit your own needs. Empty space between town hall boundaries. Okay, so from the where you place your initial colony chest, you have a certain town hall radius, which is there. Um, so that's 200, so 200 blocks. So 100 blocks in any direction. This is an extra dimension on top of this before you can place the next town hall or where the next town hall boundary can come. So this basically means there will always be a gap of 20 blocks between colonies. Um, why did we add this? Basically to stop hostile players completely surrounding a player uh, <clears throat> with colonies that through careful positioning the boundaries touch and then building a wall um, thereby completely encircling the player within um, that ring of towns, halls, uh, with them having no way of getting out of it unless they use the RTP command, in which case they can't get back to their colony. Um, so it's to prevent that griefing, really. If you want that ability, by all means, set that to zero. Turn off explosions inside the colony radius. Uh, so this stops TNT, creepers, and those sort of things causing damage within the colony. Um, still may hurt the player, I believe, but uh, possibly even NPCs, not sure. But it certainly stops block destru destruction. Then we have a whole huge list of names. So these are all the possible female first names. Uh, last names, again, male first names. Which is a huge list. Feel free to add your own names to that delete ones you don't like um, and do whatever you like with that that's quite a fun thing to play with and then towards the end pathfinding render path for finding results for debugging purposes in SSP only false by default again it's a debug thing that we use to check the pathfindings working as intended and the waypoints work as intended etc you can always put that to true and have a look at it yourself um, but has no gameplay implications just for debugging. Again, debug output verbiosity part finding. So this is just a, a function of this. Again, um, I'm, I'm not even sure what I do, what, what that does. That's been created by people far cleverer than me, and um, I suggest you don't change it. And maximum number of threads to use for pathfinding. Uh, so our pathfinding systems use different uh, threads within a processor to the main game, thus hugely increasing the performance. Um, again, I wouldn't advocate changing that unless you're a server owner or you know you have more than eight threads available, which is highly unlikely um, in the bog standard PC. Um, but again, if you do have lots and lots of threads available for whatever reason I can't even contemplate then you can change that there um, you could also reduce it as well if you don't want to tie up additional threads on your processor with pathfinding 
Um, so that is all that is currently in the config file. Um, lots to play with there and tweak your gameplay with. Um, so have fun with that. Um, we do add things into this all the time. So check back every so often, see what else has been added. But that's where it stands at the moment. Um, I should say, really, this is the 1.11.2 version of the config file. Um, the vast majority of this will be similar for the 1.10.2. I don't think there's anything extra in the 10.2 that's not in the 11.2. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.